Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us the well-known economist Prabhat Pattaik and we'll discuss what is the government's role during such a public health crisis that we have now. Prabhat, we have had a lockdown of now three weeks, possible extension for another two weeks, or at least a graded lockdown if it, does, if it doesn't really lift. Certainly it's not going to come back to normal for at least one or two months more. Now the question is, the government has, apart from the lockdown the rules, what people should or shouldn't do, it has also responsibilities, particularly for the poor, the fact that we have lost their employment, daily wages, all of that. And we've already seen the crisis of the migrant workers. The mm -hmm. second is what is the, the what, what is called the casual employment economy, which is really the one which was the small scale industries, small and medium scale industries, employed a lot of people, plus of course a lot of domestic work itself all of that is under the crisis at the moment is the government doing anything that you can see or is it entirely left to the states no i think at this moment the government is really doing nothing because the package which was uh, revealed by the finance minister nirmala sitaraman was really a trivial package it was it was extremely small uh, much of it in fact in the form of kind payments through the public distribution system which many people who are not able to access the public distribution system or the shops are closed is really meaningless at this moment what is more even if we assume that the public distribution system functioned and people got their rations and so on. Nonetheless, there is a sheer cash shortage in their hands because they are getting no incomes. Now, therefore, the government could have done a number of things. One of the things which many people have suggested is for the government to actually give a certain amount of money to every household belonging to the bottom 80 percent of the households i know it's a logistically difficult problem and so on but on the other hand this is something which could have been attempted and logistics could have been sorted out if you give let's say seven thousand rupees per household to the bottom 80 percent of the households for let's say a period of two months that would come to 3.66 lakh crores the amount which the government has actually given in the form of cash transfers to widows, pensioners and so on is something which amounts to, for three months, mind you, 34,000 crores. So it's just one-tenth of what would could have been a reasonable package. The other thing which many people have been talking about is that for the workers who are employed in small enterprises and so on, Instead of the money being given directly to them, you actually subsidize their wage bill by paying the money to the employers. That again has logistical problems. Comes to the same thing because you can keep the production going this way. But either of these or any of these options would require an amount of cash transfer, which is at least 10 times what Nirmala Sitaraman's uh, uh, package has even written on paper how much of it actually gets to them is a separate matter the other thing which the government has to do the central government is that you know there has been an enormous centralization of resources the gst itself amounted to a massive centralization of resources you took away the the right from the states for living sales tax which was their main revenue source and you centralized decisions about rates and what to do etc with the gst council where the center gets represented and what is more has a pretty dominant voice so this centralization of resources and mind you now even the gst compensation to the states has not been paid since august so this enormous centralization of resources is something which is coming in the way of the states doing their bit and mind you this is a crisis in which the states have to play a very important role and they are hamstrung by shortage of resources so two things the center has to do one is to make enough resources available to the states the other is to actually make sure that in cash and kind transfers are made to the poor households. By poor, I mean fairly large, almost 80% of the households uh, for at least a period of two months. What, so what we are seeing is that the government is neither taking these measures, nor when it talks to the, or to the states, is there an attempt to work out something together 
more or less the issue is almost looking at the lockdown, what are the measures to be taken, entirely what I would call police measures in yeah. order to control the population movements and with that hope that it will somehow stop the, the, the COVID-19 epidemic from spreading. But apart from that, the other parts of it, which is the hospitals, how to make that work, what is the support to be given, the kind of medicines we need, do we have stocks of that, testing, none of this we seem to be also at least revealing what the government is doing. We don't know where it is. And most importantly, what's called personal protective equipment, which would also give a fillet to certain kinds of industries. And we have the textile industry, for instance, which could be harnessed to making masks. None of that is also being activated under the central plan. In fact, we have ministers who are invisible at the moment. Modi gives once in a week or once in two weeks, he gives an address to the nation where he tells us either to clap and stay at home or to you know, switch off our lights, endangering the grid. But he doesn't really say what are the steps the government is taking either to fight the epidemic or the consequences of the lockdown, which is the economic crisis. None of this we seem to see. And do you think that the government at this stage is abdicating its responsibility regarding the medical and the public health issues that it is facing? Yes, I would just like to make two points. You see, firstly, when the lockdown was announced, everybody took it that the argument was that you are actually slowing down the spread of the virus that gives you some breathing time during which you can actually be prepared so that your public health system can now take care of the issues. So they should have utilized that opportunity precisely to get hold of equipment, precisely to get your public health system revamped to, 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 to make sure that you have enough testing kit and so on. This is what they have not done. The other thing is that there is a complete, you know, while there's centralization of decision making, because after all, when the lockdown happened, nobody was consulted, only Modi announced it with four hour notice, even the states were not consulted. So the decision making was centralized. But on the other hand, the media, the talking to the media, the, the, the giving out information, the idea of questions being asked is done by some joint secretary in the Ministry of Health. I think the model on this, which has really worked very well, is in Kerala, where the chief minister every evening meets the press and takes questions and everybody in the state is actually looking at the chief minister handling these questions and therefore feeling reassured there is a sense of awareness of what's going on a sense of common kind of participation and fight against the virus all of which is missing when you look at the central government it's also interesting that Kerala has been able to flatten the curve yes. and what we saw in China, it's not just the government, but as uh, Dr. Aylward, the WHO uh, person who went to China and was a part of the joint team, which the Chinese and the uh, WHO set up, he said it was an all-in government and an all-in people effort, which is what defeated the epidemic in China. What is missing here is the people are being asked to stay indoors, without which police are being let loose. We have pictures a couple of days back, for instance, in one of the markets in Delhi, the shopkeepers being beaten up. Now, this is even though those shops are supposed to be kept open for a certain number of hours of people to come. But we are talking about curfew, we are talking of section 144, that participative feeling where the people have a role does, is not, doesn't seem to be there. And in the absence of this, then they feel that only their role is to sit at home and do nothing. And particularly for the hospital and hospital staff who are being asked to fight what you said, that protect that if the government had used this time, at least protective gear should have been available. We are being asked to wear masks, but actually masks and gloves are not easily available. And this is in Delhi, forget about the rest of India. So that responsibility of following up on these issues, they seem to have abdicated completely. Yes, in fact, this has a very serious implication. You know, this was an occasion in which the people should have come together as a community.
to face the challenge. And the role of the political leadership was really to encourage the formation of that feeling of community. But if you do it the way the government is doing, then far from there being a sense of community, you actually find people being split apart, being alienated, being separated from one another. And this can actually give rise to fairly serious social tensions. All right, there is the obvious case of uh, anti anti Muslim communal sentiment that were generated because of the markets. Uh, and then, even if you leave that aside, you look at the fact that uh, the teams who go to test are getting beaten up. Yesterday, there was an incident of the police being beaten up. I mean, of, 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 of Nihang's uh, taking on the police and so on. All this really is a reflection of social tensions really getting out of hand. And they arise and accent, get accentuated precisely because no effort has been made to form a sense of community. Precisely and, because you have this police idea of the lockdown. And as you said earlier, when you talk about the poor, the migrants sections who have been now locked up in various camps across various states, they do not have the access to basic necessities as of now. They're completely dependent on what the authorities may or may not provide them. So you can have what earlier has been said by, again, Pranab said one of the economists, that we can start seeing food rights if this continues That's and right. people don't get food. Mm -hmm. So do you think that the government, as of now, there is any change in the last three weeks in this regard, or it's still continuing on the same track? You know, the only discernible change you can see is that the government, the prime minister talked to all the chief ministers. Now, to what extent he actually got the chief ministers on board, to what extent they agreed, to what extent that is going to serve some higher purpose remains to be seen. But at least the first time around, he had not talked to anybody. This time, at least he has talked to chief ministers and got their views. Where that leads, we don't know. But on the other hand, judging by the kind of mood the government has been in all these days, where the idea is really to deflect blame rather than to cope with a crisis. Like all those bogus figures, about 8.2 lakhs would have been the number of infections if they had not had the lockdown. I mean, you know, this is a deliberate attempt to mislead people by just quoting bogus figures. Now, that kind of thing augurs ill for uh, a, a, a combating this virus as a community. So the communal virus being spread while the, co the coronavirus, the novel coronavirus needs to be least to be spread, you know, needs to be fought. Coming back to my last question, assuming that another one or two months will be difficult and we do not know uh, which way it's going to go, are we at a tipping point where we'll see some flattening of the curve? It's quite unknown at the moment. The figures don't look good for at least four to five states. And the, again, we see the figures both in terms of infections and in terms of death rates. So flattening of the curve is a little bit can be probably thought to be there, but still not clear whether it's a statistical blip or is it something which is real. And at least there's a situation in Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, even Delhi is not looking very good. But if we look at this two to three months dislocation, which is the minimum we are going to see, what is the prognosis for the Indian economy? Now, the economy, of course, is in a very bad way. How, it, it, it depends how long this crisis is going to last. I believe that production activities should begin from tomorrow itself. In other words, even if you continue with some lockdown, production must begin. This is something which is essential, both as far as the economy is concerned and what is more as far as the poor people getting some incomes in their hands is concerned. So production has to be. Now you see, production also is, 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 is a strange thing. I mean, you can't have manufacturing but close retail outlets. And production is a whole chain of activities interrelated. Now that being the case, uh, how to you know how, how to actually have some kind of a selective lockdown while production goes on 
is a tricky business. One of the suggestions which has been made, which I think has some merit, is that don't have a national lockdown, have a lockdown of particular areas which may actually be particularly affected. But whatever it is, in the rest of the country, you have to have the, the resumption of activities with social distancing and generally, as I said, the inculcation of a sense of community. Somewhat of the, somewhat of the Kerala model, which right. actually did manage even before the lockdown to snuff out the community level uh, infections that were there and right. were able to contain it. So some kind of variant of that Yes. which allows the hot spots to be controlled, right. but with participation of the people, right. but allow other places to resume some level of economic activities. What Actually, we're... you know, even in China, it was not a national lockdown. No. It was only a lockdown in Wuhan. So I think that seems to be... Hubei the... province. Yeah. Actually, yeah. The, pro the whole That's province. Right. That's yes. only one province of 60, uh, of 60 million people. It's right. not yeah. 1.5 yeah. billion of China. That's right. Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 it's a local. I mean, it's, in China, even local is very big. But nonetheless, it, it is something which was localized. So. And they did close down a whole lot of things. For instance, they closed down cinemas, entertainment yes. centers, crowds. I think, yeah. I think that we can continue with because that can happen even at a national level. You can, you, you know, because congregation, religious ceremonies, for instance, congregation uh, on a large scale can be closed all over the country, but production must begin. And even schools and colleges can be out for, say, two to three months. Yes, right. it has a lot of effect, particularly on poor children who don't have access to the internet. So that's, that's right. not going to work for them. Yeah, yeah, but at yeah. least two to three months of a holiday for the schools and colleges, apart yes. from the meetings, all of that can reduce at least the kind of transmission we are seeing. Yes. You know, it's interesting. New York has a lockdown, but the metro still work. Yeah, because you right. still have emergency workers. Exactly. In India, actually, we have stopped all transport. Yes. And the lockdown is actually much more severe than yes. what it, it, it was in China, for example. Yes. Yes. So, so I think it's a very strange kind of policies we are taking, partly because you're not willing to look at the consequences of the hospitals in other places. And we do not really have faith in the people to come together. <laughs> so we believe the stick is the only answer, whether yes. it's a virus exactly. or whether it is any issue. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhat, for being with us, having a bird's eye view of the economy, what are the possible lines the government could take and we hope that we can continue this discussion because i think we are in for the next two to three months of both the epidemic and the economic consequences of the epidemic thank you very much for being with us thank you thank you for calling me